オースアイム渡辺真治空洞大道祝師ハーンアンオールソウ由比ガ流空手練習 Today's analysis is regarding one of Nai Hanchi's most typical moves Gyakuzuki from Gedanbara In some schools, this move is Kagizuki instead of Gyakuzuki which is correct Gyakuzuki or Kagizuki Yes, both are correct but If you land in a school that performs Kagizuki here, and if you do Gyakuzuki, you will be told, no, that's wrong. So, why is the Kagizuki correct and the Gyakuzuki is wrong? Can you explain it clearly? Many karate schools nowadays practice this kind of basic practice for Tsuki. In other words, it's a reputation of straight punches. There's no school that does this as a reputation of Kagizuki. Hook punches. Right? In the schools connected to Shurite or Tomarite, Naihanch was originally the first kata to be run, the most basic and essential kata. So, why is there a hook punch, Kagizuki? and not a straight punch, Gyakuzuki, in a very basic kata. Can you explain it clearly? Let's find out the answer. Os. In Matsumura Sokon's classic Naihanchi, this was a Gyakuzuki. Uh, it was also Ito's uncle who changed it to a hook punch, Kagizuki. Motobu Choki said, Uh, in Matsumura Sensei's style, the fist is thrust forward at an angle. So, the elbow is almost extended. However, in Ito Sensei's style, the fist is thrust parallel to the body. So, the arm is bent at the elbow in a hooked shape. He said so. The first thing to understand is that This action is not blocking the opponent's front kick and counter-attacking with Atsuki. There are many people and schools who understand this action that way, but to be clear, it is not a good idea. If you actually try it, you will understand right away. If you block an opponent's front kick in this way, you arm will hurt. In the worst case, your arm will be broken. After that, even if you punch, you will not, you will not reach the opponent in this form. Uh, again, this action is not preventing the opponent's front kick and counter-attacking with a tsuki. What is this action then? What does it mean? What was the essence of the old karate movement? Yes, centrifugal force and COZ, center of gravity shift. Nine Hunch is designed to help you learn how to use those two forces effectively. In Nine Hunch, both arms are connected to make a ball by combining the vertical and horizontal lines of the COZ. Then, Centrifugal force is generated there, which evokes a shift of the COZ. This is just a combination of Gedan Barai and Gyakuzuki to create a movement that moves the ball, i.e. a movement that makes it easier to run centrifugal force and COZ shift. I think some schools teach you to connect those two movements quickly. If you do this faster, the easier it is to understand the sensation of moving the ball. At this time, which is more important, 
centrifugal force or COZ shift, depends on the screw. If the hikite is held high, the ball becomes smaller. This makes it difficult to use centrifugal force, and the, uh, and the main movement is to shift the COZ. Uh, on the other hand, if the hikite is lowered, the ball becomes larger and centrifugal force can be used more easily. Furthermore, if you use a kagizuki instead of kagizuki, you will use even more centrifugal force. In short, the position of the hikite is determined by the screw's philosophy, which is more important, centrifugal force or COZ shift. And also, it makes a difference between Kyakuzuki and Kagizuki. It seems that it was uncle right to use centrifugal force P. The same is true of the high shuke I mentioned in the previous video. He changed that to the Haito Uke with more emphasis on centrifugal force. However, uh, in Itosu's Naihanchi, the way he stands is with his knees inwards like Sanchi, which makes it difficult to use the COZ shift in the first place. The Naihanchi Dachi in the classic Naihanchi or Han Kiba Dachi. In this posture, both knees are spread outward. Therefore, if one knee is relaxed, the COZ will naturally shift to the opposite side. The Naihanchi Dachi of Itosu, this shift of COZ does not occur. Therefore, the movement must rely on centrifugal force even more. Matsumura Sokon did not think highly about Itos Anko. Itosu was originally a student of Matsumura's, but Matsumura thought he was slow and sluggish and was not very enthusiastic about teaching him. Therefore, it was decided to learn from Nagahama, a Nahate teacher. It was Anko was a very large man. His height is unknown, but it is said that he weighed over 90 kilograms. Incidentally, uh, it was, was born in 1831. So, for example, if he was 30 years old, it would be 1861. Incidentally, the average weight of a Japanese male in 1900 was 52 or 3 kg. A man in the Ryukyu Kingdom in 1861 and a Japanese man in 1900. Although we may not, uh, we may not be able to directly compare the two, it is certain that Itosu was a huge man at that time. Even today, uh, there are many unique weight training tools uh, in Nahate, such as the Sashi or Chishi. I don't know if that has been around since then, but I have heard that most of the training in Nagahama involved using physical strength. It seems that Itos, who was originally a giant of a man, had acquired tremendous power in his tsuki, uh, which he acquired through more muscular training. One day, Nagahama showed Matsumura the Itos tsuki that he had trained himself and posed it. How is it? Isn't it amazing? But Matsumura said, no, uh, that will not make it in time. There is a story like that. 
not making it in time means not hitting. Perhaps Matsumura dislikes the way it was used large centrifugal force in his suki. Using a, large, uh, using a large amount of centrifugal force makes it easier to generate power. However, it is easy to be detected by its opponent. I guess that is what Matsumura meant when he said that will not make it in time. I'm doing classic Naihanch, so there are maybe many negative comments about the new Naihanch modified by Itos. But please understand that I'm not saying that the new nine hunch is no good or wrong. I'm small and thin, as you can see. Therefore, the movements of Itos, who is a giant, do not fit me. That it does fit is only a problem for me. And I'm not saying that Itos's nine hunch itself is bad or wrong. There are some in the current world today who value the older kata as being more correct or more wonderful. But I disagree with it. As I always say, I define kata as effective training designed for actual fighting. So if you can become stronger in actual fighting through practicing that kata, then it is the right kata, even if it's a new modified kata. Conversely, uh, if you know and practice the original kata, but it is not making you stronger in actual fighting, that is not a good thing. Even if the kata is correct in the sense of carrying on the tradition as it is, it is not correct as a martial art. That's what I think. Now, uh, let's look at each movement in a little more detail. Do a high shuke and use the weight of this arm to create a force to shift the COZ. You do an elbow punch so that the COZ, which is concentrated in the chest, collides. Then, once the COZ that has shifted this way is turned, turn to face the opposite direction and to a Gerangarai here. At this point, make sure that your fist is not too high. If this is too high, the hitted movement will cancel out the suit power. Of course, it should not be too low either. The fist is at the height of the upper hip bone. When the fist is at this height, the angle between the arm and the side is naturally almost parallel. This angle is also the angle at which force, uh, which force is most easily applied. Perhaps the human body was created in this way during the evolutionary process from four-legged animals. <clears throat> in this case, regarding the hikite on the opposite side. First, if the hikite is taken high, as I mentioned earlier, in this case, the ball becomes smaller and it is difficult to use centrifugal force. Therefore, the COZ shift is more important than the centrifugal force. The advantage is that it is easier to get the feeling of striking with the COZ of the fist, COZ of the arm, and the COZ of the chest. Aligned. And the disadvantage, however, is that the elbow becomes sharply angry, bending the elbow below 90 degrees is not a good thing. Uh, for example, uh, when you bench press, it will be difficult to uh, lift a bar 
if your elbow angle is below 90 degree, 90 degrees. Conversely, uh, it is easy to lift from an elbow angle position of 90 degrees or more. Or uh, you may be able to pull yourself up from here to here with relative ease in a pull up motion. But it will be a little difficult to pull yourself up faster from here to here. Uh, in other words, the human arm is designed to have difficulty exerting power if it's at acute angles. Conversely, if the hikite is low, there is no elbow angle problem. The ball is larger, so you can use more centrifugal force. But the uh, disadvantage is that it is harder to get the feeling of striking with the COZ aligned. Oops, uh, I forgot to mention that. I explained earlier that the COZ moved by the elbow punch is returned once before the Gedan Marai and the Kyakuzuki are performed. But uh, in many schools, I believe that from the elbow punch posture, one goes directly into the Gedan Marai and the Kyakuzuki. Uh, or, of course, uh, that is also acceptable. In that way, the force that has been built up here is released at once. This means that you can use a bigger centrifugal force and COZ shift force, but it makes it a little more difficult to control your posture. And uh, it, is, uh, it is not a good idea to take the hikite high from the genambarai during this tsuki. The position of the tsukite can be either high or low, but this hikite must always be at the waist, hip bone. If the hikite is pressed at chest level, the upward movement of the COZ will inhibit the sideways movement of the tsukite. It means the power of the tsuki is reduced. As a final explanation, uh, here is not the end point of the tsuki action. The COZ that was now on the right has shifted to the left. This shift of the COZ in the arms carries the COZ of the whole body. The weight of uh, the weight is pressed on the tip of this fist, resulting in a powerful tsuki. Uh, this has been explained before. In Naihanshi, we must run stability in instability, right? So the motion of the tsuki does not end here. But this part or this part of the motion is also the action of the tsuki. Please note. Also, uh, that's all for today's video. How was it? If you find it interesting and informative, please like it. Now, the theme for the next instrument of this Naihanji's analysis series will be Bracken. Sorry, uh, but I had to make other videos worthwhile. So please be patient. By the way, the other video is here. It is a video of a discussion between Daidojuku Osada Jukcho and JKA Naka Sensei. This video is currently available only in Japanese. But I have received requests 
from various people to translate it into English. So uh, I asked the creator of the original version for permission. I intend to make that from now on. Uh, it, may uh, it may take quite some time, uh, but I will do my best to release it as soon as possible. So please subscribe to my channel and look forward to it. So, see you again. Os.